Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here to do my July budget and as you can see I am still using the old monthly deluxe for my budget. I'm going to fully disclose this. I do plan on getting the monthly deluxe starting in July through June I believe it is um, and that's for a couple of reasons but before that, you're probably watching this either on Monday night or on Tuesday at some point. If you are and you're interested in a deluxe monthly, make sure to use the links down below. I have one that you can get $10 off your first purchase or another one which is an affiliate link. It really doesn't do much for you guys, but it helps you know, bring some little kickbacks to my channel um, and it really does help me bring videos to you guys and hauls and stuff like that. So make sure to check out those links if you're interested in a new Deluxe Monthly. What I'm probably going to do because I want to get the new one is I'll probably set up everything budget wise now and then as um, I get my planner and as I have time to set it up I'll probably also set it up for June or July um, in that planner as well. If you're interested in seeing like a duplicate video of all of my budget videos, um, just seeing how I'm going to do them in the new planner, let me know because I think that would be really fun to kind of compare the two. The two, And obviously it might take a, a little bit of time to tweak it to make it exactly what I want, but I think it'll be really exciting. So let's get right into it. I'm going to use this really cute um, sticker sheet. This is from Erin Condren. All the sticker sheets that I normally use for my budgets are from Erin Condren. And this is a new print that came out with the um, with the new life planner. So I thought it would be fun to use it today. How do I normally do this? I feel like I always have to look back. Okay, I usually live, leave a little bit of space at the top. So I know a lot of people have mixed emotions about the new deluxe monthlies. And honestly guys, I was shocked when I saw the huge changes because I feel like for the most part, there really aren't a ton of changes like that. Um, I feel like Erin Condren kind of stays very similar to what they always do and that's not a bad thing at all. It's just something that I've noticed. Um, and I was kind of shocked when I saw that they made so many changes. I'm, I'm glad there are definitely things that um, I'm really excited about when it comes to that, but we'll kind of see. I know a lot of people were disappointed. And sorry guys, I have to like constantly look back at what I'm doing. So, I just like my setup to be kind of the same. So, we have my salary. And then we have variable variable income. And then we have total. And this right here is one of the main reasons why I'm excited for the new one because I used to always have like a pretty set income. And now that I am using my, and I don't need that much space for my income, trust me. Um, usually, before I, before I started including some of my YouTube money into our budget, um, I would have one salary amount and that was it. It was always the same unless I got a bonus or a raise or something, which doesn't really happen that much. But, um, now that I'm including it, I do have variable income and I like to track things. I like to track what I estimate. I like to track what it actually is. I also like to track any expenses that I may have relating to that because um, a lot of people ask like, how do you budget for your stickers? Because I don't see that in your budget. Well, that's because that's technically considered my business income and I don't have I don't include that in this budget. But any money any any money that is remaining between what I make and what I spend is obviously coming in the budget. So it's kind of there, kind of not. It's it's a little messy. So anyway, I'm excited for the new planner just because I want to have like not even a whole page, but maybe just a half page where I can track, okay, this is what I think I'm going to make through some of these variable um, types of jobs. 
this is what I actually made and these are the expenses that I you know paid during the month so okay I did a giveaway I'm um, I have to pay for shipping costs what are the shipping costs what is the cost of the planner whatever so um, that's kind of what I think will be really nice about the new planner so now we're gonna get into our expenses And I like to first just write out everything and then I do the budget column and make a column for actual and over and under. So for our expenses, we have our mortgage. We have electric. Gas for our house. We have our cable and internet, but I always just put cable. We have Netflix, our car, we have gas for our car, then we have groceries, and then we get into some of our cash clips or envelopes. I recently did a video on what's kind of changing with all of that. It's um, they're really dividers, but I'm going to keep putting like a little C next to them and say that they're cash clips because that's just easier than saying cash dividers, I think. Plus, I've been saying it that long. I've been saying it for so long that I've kind of had that same, it's just in my brain that way. Um, so next we have eating out. And I, again, I like to just put a C next to it because that means cash. Then we have household. I think at some point during the month we're going to be potty training Macy. So if you guys have any suggestions on, I'm, I have to do hair too. I was about to forget that. Um, if you have any suggestions on potty training techniques or whatever, let me know. Macy is two and a half. So I feel like some methods work better for younger or older kids. So if you have any suggestions, let me know because we, wanna, we wanted to start this Friday, but Jason's going to go boating with Macy on Saturday, and so I just figure we probably should be home for the whole weekend. Um, okay, so the next thing is Jason's heart medication. We have to buy that every three months. And I could set up a sinking fund for it, but we can kind of cash flow it so it's not a huge thing. And then we have our sinking funds. And I'm just gonna put an unbudgeted spot. I don't, I obviously do not budget for unbudgeted. I just like to have it as a placeholder so when I'm doing my actuals, I have a place to put if we had anything that we didn't budget for. And honestly, I think that is it. I feel like I'm forgetting something big. I checked all of my little schedules to make sure I'm not. But if I am, I can just add it in towards the bottom. If I remember, otherwise it'll just be unbudgeted. Um, so then we have our total expenses. And towards the bottom, I always like to put something, um, it's just more of like a kind of a guide for me. It's potential savings. And it just gives me an idea of, okay, if the month goes exactly how I think, this is how much money we should save. And I think it's nice to know just because sometimes you have bad months and you're like, okay, we were supposed to save this amount. I know that we had unbudgeted stuff of this. You have a rough estimate. Um, you also just, if you have a great month, you have an idea of that too. So I just, I really like knowing kind of where we stand. So next, um, I'm just going to put in, I think I'm going to draw a line first before I do that. Okay, so we're gonna do actual, or no, budget, sorry. Budget. Actual, 
and then whatever is under or over. So I'll go ahead and draw these little lines in. Doesn't have to be perfect. I try and make it somewhat not really um, uneven because I feel like that would be really annoying to watch, but. Okay, so it looks pretty good. And then I like to just draw little lines underneath to make it kind of stand out a little bit more. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put some of the numbers in. I don't ever disclose, disclose any of my income or my mortgage, so you're not gonna see that. I'm sure if you guys have been watching, you know I don't like to disclose that. It's mostly just for personal reasons. I don't want my family or friends knowing that type of information. Definitely lends, um, you know, people asking for money because they're like, oh, I know you saved this much. So I just don't like to disclose that. So our electric bill we got in for June and it was a little bit high. I think it was like 106. It was 112. So I'm going to budget more than I normally do. I'm going to budget 120 for that. 120 One nice thing is I did save my planner from 2017. And if you guys know, I actually combined my life planner with a budget um, in that year. And it worked really nicely for that year, but I just feel like I need a little bit more space. Anyway, I looked back just to kind of see like, is that normal? Did we have an increase in our electric during the summer? And we did but I think that didn't happen until August of last year. So I think the highest it ever got was like 120. So I think that should be good. For our gas, we haven't gotten our gas bill yet. Um, I'm just gonna keep it at 60. I think last month it came in a little bit on, a little bit over 60. Our cable is kind of a set rate for, I think at least a year. And that's at 125.31. Netflix is 13. 99 gas for our car um, I am going to do 130 again I believe that's what I did last time and I think we're gonna be good doing that from now on the gas prices have kind of leveled out a little bit and maybe we're just not driving as much so 130 should work for groceries I like to budget I like to budget $100 per Sunday in the month. So there's five Sundays in July. So I'm gonna budget $500. For eating out, the same thing. I like to do $40 per um, weekend. So that ends up being $200 for eating out. Hopefully we do a little bit better than we did last month with eating out, just staying around that $40 mark so we don't run out. Um, for household, I'm going to give us $75, and that might be way more than what we need, but I do have to buy, like, underwear for Macy. I'm including that in there. Um, things just come up that you need. So I felt like I stocked up pretty well last month, but you just never know. For haircuts, I always give us $30. At some point, I need to get a haircut but I've just kind of been putting it off. So I'm just, I don't know if I want to get a trim or if I want to like completely cut my hair off. And I feel like I need to like make that decision before I do anything. Um, so next is Jason's heart medication. I feel like it's been kind of low lately, but I want to budget $125 just in case. Um, I just don't know. I feel like the last couple times we've gotten it, it's been really low, but then you know you budget low and it's gonna be really high. I think it's normally around $130. So I think that should be good. Our sinking funds are $427. Um, I have a feeling, so we're going on our cruise in August and Jason and I have talked about it. Currently we have like $185 going into our like cruise fund. So I think we're gonna keep that there and just make it a vacation fund after we are done with the cruise, just so that we have money being saved. We like to go visit my sister in Florida. Um, 
and who knows there might be other things we might increase it later on but we really like to travel places and see people so i think we're going to keep that so those are all of the items that i have for um for july so let's kind of see how it looks so what's going to be really different about the new planner and i don't I wish I would have gotten it beforehand so I could have showed you guys and did my budget actually in that one, but it just didn't work out. Um, so instead of having the productivity page, now it's just going to be a blank lined page, which will be really nice because honestly, I don't utilize this very much. I do sometimes put like a little list of, okay, I need to pay this, I need to pay that, but honestly, I don't need it. So it'll just give me way more space, I think, which will be nice. Um, the other thing that I like to do at the bottom is just put um, total savings and I need I definitely need to pick up some more of these so let's see what color do I want to do I think I'm gonna do this like lighter blue color and I just like to write in total monthly savings so once the month is over once I check how much I actually spent compared to my budget I can go ahead and put that in and I just put it towards the bottom and that way when you're flipping through the planner you could just look at the bottom of a lot of the pages and see how much you saved I obviously have a tracker in the back of like, okay, this is how much I spent this, or this is how much I saved this month. Um, this is the accumulated amount, but I also like to put it there as well. So I always say this, and I always talk about this, but with budgeting, one of the main things that I think is important for budgeting is tracking your actual spending. And if you watch my channel, you know every single week I do a check-in to see how I'm doing. Um, and I like doing that because I feel like Making a budget is not enough if you're not actually comparing what you're spending. Because Jason and I, when we first got married, we would budget. We would have a budget in Excel and we we're like, okay, we'll save this amount. And I think at that point we we're saving quite a bit because Jason was working, I was working, we had an apartment. We were both very used to spending no money because we were in college and you don't have that much money then. Um, so we were saving, we thought we were saving a ton of money, but then you look at your bank every month and you're like, why didn't this increase as much as we thought? And so we look back and we're like, wow, we spent like $600 on eating out. How crazy is that? So doing this and setting it up this way really works for me. Obviously you have to find what works for you, but for me, I need to give myself an amount that I need to stay around. So, okay. Some things are easy. You're not gonna overspend on gas for your car because why would you? If you don't need it, then what are you gonna do with the gas? But for things like groceries or eating out, stuff like that, those are easy things to, to spend a lot of money on. Um, obviously, when you have a family, you guys need to eat. So I'm not saying like don't eat, but find other ways to cut back. Since, since we've been budgeting, Jason and I do this new thing where we always go to Aldi first and then we go to other stores. That way you can get some of the cheaper options um, first and then you move on and get some of the other things you can't find at Aldi. I feel like that really works for us. With eating out, we give us ourselves a set amount. We know that we have $40 per week, so if we wanna go out somewhere nice, then that's it, that's, we go one time. Um, if we want to go to a couple cheaper options, then we can eat out twice a week. Um, you just really have to make you know, find what works for you, set boundaries for yourself, and just make sure that you know where your money is going. I think that's the huge, huge part of that. So anyway, guys, that is my July budget. Um, like I said, if you're interested in seeing me do the same thing just in the new planner and like maybe setting up some more schedules and stuff, let me know. I think it would be really fun to show you guys. Obviously, I don't know when it's gonna go up um, because I don't know when I'll get my planner and everything and I wanna kinda of play with it a little bit, but um, definitely let me know if you guys are interested in that. And yeah, so anyway guys, that is the budget for this month. If you guys have any questions about the Erin Condren planners or about budgeting or anything like that, let me know down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.